How are we doing? It's Yada Podcast time. We are here to educate, entertain, and lift the lid. My name is Russ, and on the left, I've got my boy Aldo Cataldi. On the right, I've got Mr. Charles Liddell. And I think we're going to go places. Personally, I'm really excited. It's another Yada Podcast. Keep it locked. It's Yada time. Okay, it's time for another podcast. Uh... In the interim, uh, for those of you playing at home, you missed a fantastic discussion about camera angles. Aldo asked to be left completely in the dark this week, so he's going to be shooting 100% from the hip. I'm really looking forward to this. Charles is going to practice what he's going to say, though. So no, he just literally showed you just that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to kick off with something that um, Charles has spoken about, and I've actually heard you talk about as well, Aldo. Uh, we've got how Aldo. Ha- Aldo. <laughs> Elder, not quite, but elder, as in like you know, it'd be cool, like uh, like a little wizard, yeah, <laughs> like a Harry Potter. Yeah. We actually have a Harry Potter room. We do. Oh, we yeah. have. Yes. We have to talk about that. Well, do we? Do we want to kick off on the progress of the Yada headquarters? Because normally we do talk about a lot of like pretty heavy, pithy stuff. Do we want to get excited about something light and fun to start off with, guys? Definitely. I think um, from from our perspective, we're super pumped. I mean, we've made a lot of progress with what we're doing, so. Yeah, let's, let's kick that off. been a week seven um, whole days guys and these boys have been working the phones bear in mind there has been a public holiday amongst all of this and we're still getting shit done yeah so we've signed a lease we've got an awesome property in Subiaco now we've pretty much had it all painted in that week um, we've ordered all the furniture to get the living daylights out of my wife but the amount of money that we spend yeah. <laughs> you know, trying to keep a wrangle on this guy as to um, what he's doing budget wise is like you know, a challenge unto itself i keep saying it's in the budget but the budget keeps moving up yeah that's what you yeah. don't understand like i'm like it's in budget but he doesn't know what the budget is no it's, it's, <laughs> so, well he keeps changing it he's like yeah well, this is oh, the this budget we discussed like the budget but it's moved up yeah. I, i'm going to put it out there that uh Cataldi, your calling was clearly to be in the film industry go mate you need to make this film Hollywood, Hemsworth, you've only got this money, and you're like, well, too bad I spent more than that, so release it or don't. <laughs> yeah, we've um, <laughs> so no, been good. We've um, it's crazy to think how much we've done in a week. It's, yeah, like I feel like we've been doing, we've been, what we've what we've accomplished in a week is like what most people are accomplishing. Like we we were we got trades on public holidays. It's the, the thing is like we've been doing this a long time, so we've got we've got connections with trades, and, and we, we we have a good community of people that you know we work with. I think fundamentally it comes down to the motivation. Like yeah. we are severely motivated by mm. this, and we're heavily financially, you know, invested in this yeah. to make sure that it, it's going to deliver for you know for our clients and for us yeah. and for everybody on the team. It, it, it's, um, you know, we're putting our money where our mouth is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. literally. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I want to have yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty scary to sort of go down that hole and, and go as hard as we can because you know we're, we're pretty much eighteen months ahead of where we thought we were going to be to be honest. Yeah. Um, but you know, looking back in in retrospect, I mean, you know, you know, it's literally in fifteen minutes it will be exactly seven days that we got the keys, and you know we're, we couldn't be you know more impressed and more delighted with where we are with you know what we've done with the other um, headquarters so far. So. You know, hopefully, you know, another two, three weeks, we have our, you know, our main signs in, and you know, yeah, it's, it's really exciting stuff. We want to, we want to build a community where, um, we'll speak a little bit on it, like where people can come, not just for a house, but you know, like for motivation, for education. Like, there's going to be like a, um, a cafe we're going to build in there as well. So if we want to have coffees with developers or clients, or just have a chat and. We're just going to make it more of a, a re- kind of relaxed environment. It's going to be a relaxed aspect of it as well, which. Which I think we'll do a reveal instead of revealing too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, I'm man, now. I got a fun one for you right off the bat. I'm going to start point you. Yes, so because I oh, figured, no. for those of you who've heard all of our other podcasts, oh, the excuses. The the the, the saying that out. comes out of the, the <clears throat> chair over here is, oh, sorry. To be fair, I didn't hear. So that's why I'm getting your attention straight off the bat. House energy rankings, my friend. The cost impact, is it a good idea? Is it poor execution? What are your thoughts on it? Because I've seen some some guys selling it. It's like, yeah, cool. It's, it's good that we're doing something. And other people are like, it's a great concept, but it's 
done really poorly. What do you mean, like solar power? Or, oh, or just what? the just the because obviously to build in certain areas, to build like everything that needs to be like in certain energy cert certifications now, right? Yeah. Um, that's 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 a, that's a yeah that's been on hold for a while since two thousand and nineteen. The, mm. the energy the energy ratings have kind of been on hold with with with, with the grants and stuff. Everything's been changing because there was going to be. I think it's seven star. That was supposed, it's to, supposed to be seven star. I think in and, May. Yeah, and then it, then it got held back, and so it's kind of been in limbo. Look, I mean, to be honest with you, it's extra cost, right, up front for the client. So I don't think I necessarily agree with it. But again, it's the council that, that puts these implications in. You know, for I mean, there's a reason for it. But the only issue I find is that when you're trying to build a house within a budget, if you've got to put energy in, and that's going to cost us five or six grand or four grand, or whatever it is. It just raises the the allowance for the house. It makes the house more expensive and already an expensive market. So, I think at the moment it's been put on hold. So, look, I mean, it is what it is, but we have no control over it. Like now, just to clarify for people who might not be industry savvy, now are these things set by federal government, state government? Is this a council thing? Like, who sets these ratings? So generally, it would be set by the building the building regulations um, of Western Australia. So. Um, and they, they do reflect on what's going on nationally and globally, um, but it's also heavily dependent on the block orientation, the size yeah. of the house. So it, it, is, it is really like how long is a piece of string. Um, and when you're trying to you know, get first home buyers into their home, it, it's just another hurdle that you've got to is negotiate. It one, look, it's, it's one we don't really like to talk about, not, not like, but it's. There's so many components in building a house. If we have to overwhelm the client and talk about everything, finance, mortgages, you know, interest rates, and you're going, once you've done that, you're talking about like, you know, your footings and your site works, you need to wear energy, you're talking about coastal, you've got to pick and choose what's relevant for each client, you know. We try and make it simple. We don't want to confuse the client because if we make it seem too difficult, people are not going to want to build. What's up? Buying a car, right? Yeah, we don't, you don't, you don't need every component in the car. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of those things where but you may you may want to know certain aspects of it. So you know, the the, the way that we're looking at um, you know being transparent and, and and guiding the clients through the process is about giving them information that's important to them because every client's different. Every client's going to have different needs, different requirements, and things that are going to concern them because they're going to have someone in their ear about you know energy, and then someone's going to come to them and say, you know, what about your rainwater? And you know, someone's going to come yeah. to them about something else. So look, it's it's. We, we try to make it as simple as, as possible. Um, you know, like I said, we've, we've done all the hard work to make sure that what we're putting forward, we'd be comfortable with. So I think it's fair to say, like, um, just being upfront with the client about what in it explains them what it is, what's involved, I think that's as far as it needs to get. In terms of like regulations and what's happening, I think that it's constantly changing. But for us, it's just being upfront with the client, saying, listen, if you build in this area of this house, it requires energy six star, and for that we require X, Y, Z. It differs, obviously, with the house. And we can just be transparent with the client up front. And, and just so you be clear, what the energy rating means is that the, the house is tested in regards to it's you know much like a dishwasher or your, your television, um, you know how much energy it's it requires to keep it at um, you know a neutral kind of level. So you know in some cases you know double glazing may be required because mm -hmm. of the orientation of the home. In other cases you know you're going to have to remove skylights because it's going to you know require too much energy to heat the house or cool the house. So. Um, that's ultimately what that energy rating comes down to. That's what it means to you know for people not necessarily in in the know. Because anyway. I, I mean I think it's a it, it's a good one to, to seize on in terms of the whole transparency conversations that we have. Because like you said, if people don't know where this money is going and why they're needing to spend it straight away, it's just like trying to keep that trust, maintain that trust, and keep it together. Um, I can tell that this one's not one that we're super excited about, <laughs> which is cool, man. I've got plenty of options here, man. Come on, give us the next one, Russ. I've got, I've got one here that I have heard Mr. Mr. Cataldi riff on more than once. Infill housing, ladies and gentlemen. As all yeah. of the older councils with the quarter acre blocks bit by bit losing those blocks and they're doubling up. The family homes are getting extinct. Yes. Getting extinct. So what do you think? I mean, obviously, you're not a huge fan of it, but for people that don't want to live out in, where did we call it, Bumfuck, Idaho, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it presents a great option. Now, if you were looking at an infill site yourself, what would you look for? What would be the thing that would get you over? Especially that you're not a fan of it. So what would be, what would be the thing that would win you over? I don't know, for me, it's not so much the site. It's about, for me, it's location, right? So it depends on what you want in the house. So, you know, you want to be western suburbs, eastern suburbs, you want to be north, you want to be south, close to the beach, you want to be close to the river. So. 
it really depends. Like, you know, and like I said in last week's podcast, it really depends where you feel comfortable. If you want to be north, like I'm a north guy, I like north, north west. So I like Netherlands, I like, you know, and Charles, like, you know, where, where are you? You're in North Rio. North Rio. So yeah. you're, you're same as me, kind of situation. For me, so, it's lifestyles. Like, yeah, know, I want something where I can take the kids, you know, there's lots of amenities around. Um, and I think that's sort of representative of most people buying a house. Yeah, you want to, you know, pick what's important to you. Um, so, you know, Aldo needs to be close to King Street so he can go shopping. I think on King Street anymore. I oh, know. It's, like, it's, it's just whiskey bars and a couple that's of why he's so short shoe yeah. stores. That's, that's it. That's why he's so depressed and he has to go on holiday for three, four months at a time. Well, where did he get my shopping done? <laughs> I know, right? He's still got tags on his clothes walking in this morning. Life, it's yeah. like, have you worn that before? Yeah, a couple of times. No, you haven't. Yeah, once. Yeah, like as good as my wife. You know, open up the cupboard. It's like, oh, yeah, I've had this for ages. All Don't got worry. tags on it. All got tags on it. The... The, um, the interesting thing about what you said, right, with the um, with, with location as well, is like it comes directly down to affordability as well. Mm-hmm. It's like how many times Charles would be a clients walk in and they've been like, well, what do you, so their budget is, you know, well, let's figure out a budget for them, right? So we sit down and figure out a budget. They can borrow four hundred thousand. They want to pay three fifty a week or whatever it is. And like, where do you want to live? They're like, oh, you know, Chew Hill or like, you know, Bar- Scarborough or, or Scarborough or Double View. Double View is really cool. And then Double View, it's like. Okay, when is the last time you saw a house in WU? A house on a one by one apartment sell for $400,000. So, uh, 1996, I believe. When was the last time you saw a rental there for you know, 350 a week? So, nope. so you know. it's, it's, it's trying to realign people's expectations. Infill is a good one. The problem with infill is that everyone is trying to get closer and closer to the city. For whatever reason, they want to be as close as they can to the city. Guilty. So the problem with that is Perth is now rezoning a lot of these areas like Netherlands and they're trying to make obviously more apartments and all that sort of stuff in Cottesloe and all these kind of areas, right? The issue there is that, like we spoke about before, is that the family home is dying and it's dying out of suburbs as well. So we have to find a balance between having big blocks and little blocks as well. But more important to the first home buyer, which is where we're trying to help because I mean, you know, a, a downsizer or a more educated buyer who's done it you know, three or four times you know, before, they, they, they understand the process, they're happy to compromise on those because they want that location, that proximity. But for a first home buyer, the amount that it's gonna cost just to prepare a, a block that's been subdivided, I mean, it's a huge amount that goes into the earth yeah. just to make it ready. You know, I mean, in some cases, it could be you know, 40, 50, 90,000 dollars before you can even build anything. Most, builders, get like, most builders, like your big builders, if you look at your big ticket builders, so your top three builders in Perth, I won't name it, I'll Google them. They weren't built in infill suburbs, specifically, because, and we spoke about one yesterday, we spoke yes. with the guy yesterday, uh, the, the, the other day, and particularly because um, it gets complicated. They want to f- have a fixed site work cost. You go into an infill block, they're fine clay. The site works, all, which is, you know, the soil is a bit more reactive, which means you get thicker slabs, all this sort of stuff, and your site works is 30 grand. How can you fix site costs when you fix it at 10 grand, but you've got a 30 grand site now? Someone's not wearing that 20K, but on the same token, it's not like you want to pass that on to the client. So, yeah, you do end up in a spot of who's, who's, who's picking up the tab. And then this is a good you know, I, topic of discussion because, yeah. I mean, again, this is a level of transparency. The reason why you know, we, we focus on a lot of the developer blocks is because they give us A-class you know, development yeah. sites, yeah. which means that the, the maximum amount of money has been put into the home. Yeah, like we're not preparing land. I mean, you know, I had a client before that, um, you know, again a clay site, um, and there was something close to forty-five thousand yeah. dollars in putting the footing down, which is, you know, it, it, it's necessary because the engineering requires it, so the house doesn't crack and fall apart. So it's a safety and you know engineering requirement. Mm. But that's 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 a lot of money that he's taken away from what he could have spent on other. You know, making a, a larger house or you know, driving a little bit further. You know. I'll, give you, I'll give you an example, right? If you, it's a bit far out, but if, if you go into realestate.com and you want to look, go look at like Parkerville, right? Or type in um, one of these far, like, you know, far suburbs like, yeah, Parkerville or whatever, right? Or not, not Ginger, not that's too far. Let, let's go with Bumfuck Idaho. Yeah, the arse end of Mandra. <laughs> no, but so you go to Parkerville in, in realestate.com and look at the block sizes you get. Look how cheap they are for the size. You might see you get two acres for 250 grand, right? The, the reason is, is because to, for you to go and build on that block, it's gonna cost you the same amount you're buying the block for. Because first of all, you can only build on, a, so say that the block is a thousand square meters. You can't build on a thousand square meters. You get a building envelope, envelope. That building envelope that's created by the council for, you might only be 250 to 300 square meters. You've got to clear that now. So you have to put water, run-ins, electrical, and get rid of all the trees and all that. So now your, your site cost is going to be $150,000. The block's two fifty. 
all of a sudden you have less to spend on the house. You're like, oh, 250 for the block, 200 for the house, 450, we well, sweet. Yeah. No, it's 650. Yeah. You know, like, so like, like you said, it's that whole thing where you, you look at the deal before the site works, you're like, ah, oh, this is a steal. And the minute you read the fine print, you're like, oh, that, that I could wear that. Oh. It just oh, comes no. down to education. When you go see a builder, education, you'll find, exactly. when you go see all the standard building companies, everyone's been trained in the same, trained in the same way. You'll sit down with them, you'll have a first appointment, they'll go through finance, land, home. Finance is the most important part because without finance you can't buy a house. They all sell the same spiel, right? And then basically all you do is they figure out a budget, you speak to the broker, they find you a block in the infill suburb, you build a house, there you go, bang. It's a standard vinyl flooring, laminate bench tops, whatever, right? That's been done for 20 years. So the, the, the truth is what we kind of want to do differently here is educate clients that are different. Or do you have to believe, can, do you have to build in, in, in just, the states? Yeah, more importantly is just ask the why. Why do you yeah. need to be there? Because if we understand why they need to be there, we can provide them with real proper you know, solutions. Like, so, solutions as to yeah. what they should be doing. Like, tell us about your family. Tell us how you live your life. And like, have you heard about this suburb? Have you heard about, like the way I've always dealt with my clients is like, I sit there, I speak to them for 20, 25 minutes before I even talk about the house. Tell me how you live your life. Tell me more about you. And then it's like, okay, well, hang on a sec. You, you wanted to come here and live in Balcona, but you might be better suited to Yanship. You know, like, did you know Yanship's got this and train lines and it's got, it's close to the beach and this and that. And, and then a bigger block. You yeah. Know, you know, the serenity. The budget. You've got, you know, all of this sort of stuff. Um, because people, we've been doing this a long time. We understand the, we understand Perth, you know. So, look, I think for us, it's, it's getting to know people on a personal level. Once you know them, then you can talk about um, options, you know? Can you hear this on the market? Yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. Jingle, jingle. Yeah, that is, I, like the, Christmas. Christmas. I like a Christmas tree. <laughs> you no, know, you're like a little elf. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing that makes me really happy about that whole thing as well is like, I, I think we should probably do this video content at some point, but so many in Perth suburbs, people don't know where they are. And I'm not even meaning the far out ones. If you said to someone, oh, I've just bought in Menorah, how many people would be like, no, where? No, it's just like, no, no, it's just, just Yokanish, Morley-ish. Next to Mal Orley, and then yeah. they don't realise, or Corbinia. Yeah, yeah. And, like, and, the, and the thing is as well, like for so many people, they hear a t name of a suburb and immediately go, no, and you like, just show them on a map, you go, it's a two minute drive, dude. Yeah, yeah but it's also, you can't need your advice from, right? I mean, this is, this is what we're saying as well. Mm. I mean, you know, when, sure. when you're picking a builder, or you're picking you know, a sales representative that you want to work with, you, know, you, you want to have the confidence that they're going to give you the right information. Like, if, if you're ill, you know, you're not going to just go, Oh, hey, bruv. You know, oh, hey, bruv. <laughs> yeah. um, That's actually I, I, how I talk on a daily basis. He, he, he does. He does South English, <laughs> South London. Um, he, he, he says, you go, oh, like, I'm, I'm feeling a bit crook. You know, what should I have? I'll oh, just go have a bacon egg sandwich. You'll be fine. You know, it's, it's, you're going to get the same outcome if you ask the, the wrong person you know, the right question. It, don't don't buy a house, guys. Buy a bacon and egg sandwich. And with that, that's us done for this week. Remember... Speak, speaking that, about that, one sec. There's ooh. actually... If anyone's mm -hmm. listening, check out this new estate called Kennedy Bay in Paul Kennedy. Parcel Properties done it. It's it, just have a look at what they've done. Um, Top and pretty good. good. It's it's amazing. Just yeah. um, that's a bit, a bit of a shout out there, guys. So hey, remember, this is what happens when you tune into the very end of the episode. You get the hottest of hot tips. Kennedy Bay. Top it in. Kennedy Bay. Type it in. Lock it in. Lock it in. Lock it in, Eddie. Lock it in, Eddie. All right, guys. That's it for uh, this week. We will see you next week. We might even see a change of uh, costume for some of us. You might not. Who knows? Cheers, guys. Marco. Alright. That was not bad. That was bad. Best part is time-wise we smashed through that as well. Like, also, thank you for that, Sam.